What's going on boxing fans? Julian Williams with the distance. I have another video for you guys today. Um this one is from SpaceX Cowboy. Something like that. Something along those lines. But um his question um to me was which fighter do I think um from era, any era would be successful today? Um there's so many fighters I could think of that um have have the style that could be very successful um in this era. You know, um, many fighters from past eras. You know, but you know, necessarily um the fighters that I think of are the defensive fighters. You know, really, um I can name a few, um and um I'll pro I'll name about five. Um since I, since me um I do everything best in fives, but um one I could think of is Benny Leonard. Benny Leonard the former lightweight champion in like the nineteen thirties. I think that Benny Leonard, um who um was defensive as well, um, mastered down the sweet science. Um, you know, he was the type of fire. His, like I said in another video, my um, defensive fires video, his defense, his his defense pretty much, or his offense was his defense. You know, his footwork is really good, and um, you know, he he would kind of come in on the inside and come on the outside. You know, because um, it was like when he was done with his combination, he would go up, he would kind of go out, and um, you know, then he'd come back in you know, with another combination. Uh, Benny Leonard, I think, would be very successful in this era of um, lightweights because um, you know some lightweights yet some lightweights today are very um, flat-footed, flat-footed to say the least. And um, Benny Leonard did very well against pressure fighters. Another I can think of is Willie Pep. Willie Pep would be very successful, um, you know, um, today because I say Willie Pep because just because of the way he would slip shots. You know, um, the only fight that that I could think of that slip shots the way, you know, similar to what how Willie Pep slip shot was Pinel Whitaker. You know, who's um probably number three. I was gonna think. I was gonna say actually, I'll I'll pair um Pep and um Whitaker together just because both both of them had you know very good ability to slip shots. You know, their ability to ship, slip shots were was just amazing. Was just amazing. You know, um, just because. You know, just because, you know, they weren't, you know, getting hit often. But how it was, though, is they were so used to not being hit. When they got hit, their their game plan was a lot different. You know, um, like, um, Whitaker versus um, Trinidad, even though it was a... It wasn't necessarily the best Pernell Whitaker. The fact that he was getting hit, you know, it was... It, it, it showed a big difference, you know, um... Then when you know he was in the middle of his prime, and he wasn't getting hit, you know. Um, so when you when you have a style like that, when you're evading all kinds of shots and you lose those reflexes, then um, in a way there's a hole in your game. And Penel Whitaker and Willie Pep, you know, towards the end of their careers, actually started to get hit more often. But I do think that with their style of slipping shots and um, evading all kinds of evading all kinds of punches. You know, um, just evading all kinds of punches. I think that um, they would um, they would be successful in any era. Um, another one, Bob Foster. Um, Bob Foster, um, big, tall, um, light heavyweight uh, with um, deadly knockout power. Um, you know, um, really, you know, that's all I have to say about him. You know, tall, light heavyweight, looked like he needed a meal or two. You know. Um, but he had power in both hands and could knock you out with any punch. If he catches you just right, you know, you're going to sleep. And he had some of the the most on um, wicked knockouts at light heavyweight in in um, boxing history. Some you know, some of the best, you know, some of the best, some you know, some of the most brutal, you know, at light heavyweight. You know, just look at the fight with um Mike Quarry or look at the fight with Dick Tiger and you'll see what I'm talking about. You know, um any man that's about six one and can fight light heavyweight, can move up all the way up to heavyweight and come back down to light heavyweight is very, um, is actually very, um, dangerous, you know, for, um, for the opposition, you know, because, you know, a lot of light heavyweights are probably, you know, most light heavyweights are about in between 5'10 and, um, 6'3 now, but, you know, I think Chad Dawson's about 6'3, but now, um, but back then, you know, um, he was, very tall for a light heavyweight. He was very tall 
and um, I actually think um, he could move down to. Um, I actually think he could move down to um, 168. You know, if there was a 168 back then. But um, Bob Foster was just you know tall, um, tall light heavyweight with you know with power in both hands. You know, that's you know that could survive any era. You know, on top of that, he was skilled too, and he had a long jab. You know, he had a very long jab. So, you know, he so he he knew how to fight big. So, um, I said Bob Foster's one. Um, Muhammad Ali, of course. You know, the fact that he did evade shots, and um, the fact that he was very good on his feet, good on his toes, was able to put his shots together very well. You know, Muhammad Ali. Um, you know, was one was um one of those heavyweights that um helped transcend the sport, of course. And you know, in um any era, you do need that one fire that can transcend the sport and make it much bigger than what it, what it was before that person was in the sport. And Muhammad Ali, um, you know, um, I think that you know just that style alone, um, that style alone, um, you know, he could have you know fought in there any era with. It. You know, um, just imagine, you know, the bare, the bare knuckle, um, London Prize era, you know, fighting that way, you know, um, he would have gotten a lot of criticism for it, but it would, but it would have worked for him because he was going to hit without being hit. So, um, if you're fighting, you get hit without being hit, more than likely you're going to win. Um, because, you know, you're setting the pace and you're controlling the action, um, and, um, you could look at, but then again, you have those fights where you look at the copy box or you look at the stats. And the other fighter lands way more shots, um, lands way more shots than um, another fighter lands. But you know they they still lose the fight. But I think that Ali um, had just had the foot speed to our box. Um, any fighter had the foot speed to do so. Um, and another one I think that could survive um, any era. I'd say um, Costa Zoo, um, just because he was tough. He was tough, rugged. You know. Um, had good had um good knockout power, you know, um and just knew how to fight, knew how to adjust. You know, he could do anything in the ring. You know, um Kasuzu, um you know um had um I think it was he had a really deadly right hand. Very deadly right hand and um and he put a lot of his opponents down for the count. And I think that, you know, every um era needs um needs that one tough man in the era to um you know, that will bring crowds and can um <clears throat> and can attract the following, and Kasuzu did that. He attracted the following. You know, um, he 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 brought exciting matches, and um and you know he did have you know a whole um nation, a whole boxing um a whole boxing um community behind him. You know, at one time you know he was considered you know one of the best pound for pound fighters in the world. You know, in his career, and um another moment it was um that probably had to stand out was his match against Zab Judah. You know, a lot of people, um, you know, um, refer to it as the, ch the chicken dance, but, um, but you know, um, you just need, you know, I, I, I brought up, you know, um, three, the you know, four defensive fighters and one, and two, um, two fighters who, um, who can get the knockout, who are, um, you know, one, you know, tall fighter who had, you know, a big advantage, and another fighter who, um, had the crowd behind him and, um, and brought, and actually brought some, some action packed fights. But so, um, those are some fights I could think of that could be successful in any era of boxing. You know, due to, due to, um, characteristics and, um, their abilities in the ring and what they, and, um, the excitement that they brought to crowds and, and, um, other than excitement, the, the skill level. You know, um, an, an honorable mention I could say is probably Winky, right? I think he could last and, he he could be successful in any era, you know, um, with his style. But um, anyway, um, that's the distance. Thanks for watching. Peace.